delay, latency, the scourge of the computer musician. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. The idea that uh, sometimes the timing when you're using DAW isn't perfect. So let's go and have a look at that now. Right, so I've got uh, I've got another little project set up. Um, we're going to use the DeepMind again, although we will have a look at something else as well. So latency is this uh, phenomenon where you put notes into your sequencer and there's a slight delay before you hear them. Uh, and this is all part and parcel of using computers for music production, unfortunately. Um, you can reduce it to negligible values. It's always going to be there a little bit. Um, but basically speaking, the, the easiest way to, to cope with latency is to adjust the buffer size of your audio interface. It's one of the reasons why you need an audio interface on PC specifically. It doesn't matter quite so much for Mac, but you still need to adjust your buffer size. So just briefly looking at the options in, let me just switch that off briefly. Uh, the options in Ableton Live. If you come into the audio section, you can choose your driver type here, which device you're using. And we can also change the buffer size in the middle here. Now, each uh, piece of software will have a slightly different way of dealing with this, but they will all have options to change the buffer size. Now, for me, I've got several choices. I have to use ASIO drivers on PC, which is fine. I can use my Madiface software, which is the RME software. ASIO for All is a third-party ASIO driver for PC. And Rubbish. Uh, useful in some situations, but you can't really use it uh, for most applications. The FL Studio ASIO driver is equally as nonsense. The Windows generic one, rubbish, and the virus one is just there so I can stream audio over USB from the virus. So pick the uh, device that you are using. If you had, for example, the Steinberg interface that I've showed you, or Focus, whatever you're using, make sure you use their drivers and in Ableton Live, you come into Hardware Setup, and this brings up the RME control window or the settings window. And this is where I can change my buffer size. And buffer size is measured in samples. So for me, on this interface, I can choose up to 2,048 samples or as low as 32 samples. We're going to leave it as, for now, as it is for now because I can't change it whilst I'm recording. But... To keep this as simple as possible, the bigger the buffer size, the less CPU you're using on your computer for the work that you're doing. Um, but at the cost of latency, there's a, there's a greater latency involved in the bigger buffer sizes. And obviously the smaller buffer sizes, you get a much lower latency, but the CPU is working much harder to do what you're asking it to do. So. The way to think about this is your buffer size is like, right, if you're playing Tetris, right, I'm sure you're all familiar with Tetris, even if you haven't played it, you have blocks falling down from the sky and you have to arrange them in rows at the bottom of the screen. And this column, the amount of time you've got to arrange those blocks can be, can be thought of as a buffer size. So if you have a massively high game of Tetris, you've got lots of time to figure out what you need to do with the blocks before they hit the bottom. And that's a big buffer size. But the problem is it takes a long time for the information or the blocks to get there. And that's why you have the latency. If you have a really small game of Tetris, the blocks are coming down and hitting the bottom almost immediately. But you have to concentrate really hard on what you're doing to, to arrange them before they hit the bottom. And that's effectively what you're asking the computer to do. If you're providing it with a smaller buffer size, it has less time to calculate what you're asking it to do. So your CPU use will be a lot higher. But let's look at this in practice. So I've got a high buffer setting at the moment, 2048 samples. That's as high as this will go. I have the DeepMind plugged in. And if I use my MIDI controller to play the notes, you can hear the delay between me playing the notes and you hearing the notes. It's dun dun dun, dun. and that's a massive delay. In practice, that's a massive delay. You couldn't you couldn't play something from Ableton Live and play along with it. The delay is too big. You'd end up getting confused. So if I want 
instantaneous playback, I'll have to reduce my buffer setting considerably. But let's look at this in the context of recording as well. So I've got an audio channel set up, which is listening to the DeepMind channel. You can see the audio is coming from the DeepMind channel here. So let me record arm it. Have I got everything set up right? Right, let's have a go. Right, so I'm just playing pulses, really short, sharp staccato pulses from the DeepMind so that we can, we, we've got a definite transient to, to look at the timing. Just going quickly back to my options screen, preferences. Um, Ableton Live is reporting that my, <coughs> excuse me, input latency is 43 milliseconds. My output latency is also 43.9. So there should be an overall latency of just under 87 milliseconds, which is high. It's a lot. And if we look at what we've recorded here, this is uh, where the note should be, and this is where it actually is, all the way across here. So that's a big delay between where we want the note and where it actually is. Uh, and if you look down at the information bar at the bottom here, as I highlight this selection, approximately, there we go, let me hover over it. You can see in the bottom left, the duration is showing 89 milliseconds. So that's a massive delay. That's not something we can work with um, in practice. Now, if you have to record with a bigger buffer size because your CPU is starting to struggle, you can record it in like this and then manually move your samples back in the arrange mode. But it's not ideal, especially when you're tracking. If you've got a lot of tracks going on and you're trying to, even if you're using a guitar or singing, you don't want to play a guitar into Ableton Live or Cubase, whatever you're using, and then hear it coming back to you 89 milliseconds later, it, it'll be impossible to play along to. So what we need to do is reduce our buffer size. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave that audio sample in there. Now I can't change the buffer size while I'm recording with OBS because it glitches the audio. Um, so I'm gonna to have to shut this down and I'll come back to you in a second. Shazam! Right, fingers crossed this has all worked out fine. So I've changed my buffer size now down to 32 samples. So many multiples less than 2,048 samples. Um, okay. And Ableton is now reporting 3.58 milliseconds, which is virtually imperceptible. Uh, you'd be hard pushed to even notice that. So let's have a look at just what it sounds like now based on my MIDI notes. they're happening at the same time. So so my input latency now is as close as it needs to be zero. I can't perceive a, a delay between me hitting a note and hearing a note. And that's what you need if you're playing something in live. Um, there's always gonna be some latency inherent in using a computer because you've got data going in, the computer has to figure out what it needs to do with it, and then it's throwing audio out. So there's always going to be something there, but once you're down to one or two milliseconds, it's it doesn't really matter anymore. But let's record this in and see what, what we've got. Right, let's remind ourselves what we had before. Again, look down at this bar at the bottom for the information. This is what we had before, roughly. I'm not, I'm not sure if I can get it exactly on the transient. There you go. Uh, yeah, 89 milliseconds. It's showing us down here. And then let's look at the new recording at the much reduced buffer size. Still not perfect. And it's showing us seven milliseconds for that one. So the reporting that Ableton gives us isn't perfect. And I do know that OBS adds a few milliseconds as well. When I'm recording with OBS, it does affect the overall latency. That's showing six milliseconds. Um, you, you will also notice that each transient might be slightly out because you do have something called MIDI jitter as well. So not only is MIDI timing not perfect in that direction, it gets much better if you're not using a computer. Um, but MIDI timing or jitter can alter slightly by a few milliseconds between notes as well. So it's never gonna be perfect.
uh, but it can be close enough. So let's have a listen to these. Go on, down you go. Let's have a listen to these two recordings along with the Ableton clock. Metronome, should I say. So this is the first one. It's not even close. This is the second one. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's on. It sounds like it's right. Now, this is going to have... Um, it, it, it kind of depends on what kind of music you're making as well. If you're doing something like Psytrance, where you start to become completely obsessive about transients and phase and everything like that, and everything has to be absolutely tight, you wouldn't accept even a few milliseconds out uh, because it can mess around with your phase. So... In that respect, you'd, you'd probably end up slicing some of the samples apart and then nudging them back to exactly where you want them to be. But if you're making synth wave and a lot of the 80s music, none of it was perfect in terms of timing. If you're doing something like synth wave, which is a bit slower, you're probably messing around with varying pitches anyway and throwing saturation all over it. And distortion alone can start smudging or smearing transients. So a couple of seconds, a couple of milliseconds out for something like synthwave just wouldn't matter. So they're the fundamentals of um, latency. One other thing, if you have a look up here for in the options, Ableton Live's got something called delay compensation. Now I will say Ableton's not the best for timing. It really isn't, but it's good enough for most people. If we just switch on delay compensation. Um, that tends to nudge most things where they need to be. So you don't need to worry about your latency, so, so your, your buffer setting so much. So make sure you've got that on if you're recording. Let's just have a little test. Let me switch that one back on. So that's with delay compensation on this third recording. Oh, computer's a bit slow today. Uh, what's that showing us? Yeah, that's giving us a bit better, actually. So we're back down to two, three milliseconds now. Yeah, so that's actually that's actually improved things a bit. Um, it's better to use the lower latencies anyway, especially if you're playing notes in. But switch delay compensation on whichever door you're using. I think Cubase is called plug-in delay compensation. And there's probably equivalents for Logic and Studio One and that kind of thing as well. So that's what latency is and how to deal with it. Hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate the support from you guys. If you liked this video, then you know, smash that like button. And if you want to be notified about new content, hit the subscribe and the bell notifications. Peace.